Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the privilege we have. Thank you for your children, who are not only your children, but your servants. We're praying that what we're learning together in the book of Joshua will make us to be better servants of the Lord in Jesus' name. Breathe upon your word today. Lead us in your truth. Make us stronger in the service of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. We come to chapter 5 today, and you will discover many, many things in chapter 5. I titled the chapter, Circumcised Israel and a Divine Captain. Let's select some verses as we plunge into the chapter. Joshua chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which won the, on the side, Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, had that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more, because of the children of Israel. The Lord had divided river Jordan before them, and that made them add faith. Note this point. What generated faith in the heart of the children of God generated fear in the hearts of the unbelievers. Which means what builds faith in us brings fear in them. In verse 2. And at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. They had been circumcised generally as a nation in the wilderness just once. But those who were born in the land in the wilderness, they were not circumcised. Before they entered into the promised land, circumcision was necessary. Move on to verse 9. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month eve at evening in the place of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the lunch on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the cell same day, verse twelve, and the manna ceased on the morrow. After they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Then in verse 13, it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us of our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as a captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. That in brief is what we're looking at today in uh, the chapter before us. But I need to tell you that the events of this chapter actually formed a landmark in the new life of the children of Israel. As well as in the ministerial career of Joshua. They had just left the wilderness behind. And they walked through River Jordan that God parted in two, divided miraculously. And that great victory that they had at Jordan brought fear to the hearts of the Canaanites. It says, their heart melted, neither was there any spirit in them anymore. The crossing of Jordan was a confirmation to the children of Israel that they will conquer Canaan. And when God performs an initial miracle in your life, that should be a confirmation that all the other necessary miracles that will make you enter to the land of Canaan, the land of promise, the Lord will do. If he has done this, then he will do all that remains. In this chapter, we learn quite of a lot of things. And I list them down in the introduction there. Number one, the Canaanites were terrified. Number two, the covenant of circumcision was renewed. They were told to be circumcised. 
That was a sign of the token of the covenant between God and Abraham. Between God and the children of Israel. And if they were going to possess their possession, they had to enact, they had to, uh, they had to uh, make sure that they had that covenant again. Number three, the condition and the curse and the consequences of the reproach of Egypt were rolled away from them. They had spent many years in Egypt. And as a result of that, a lot of things uh, belonging to Egypt and the reproach of Egypt uh, now was rolled away. And a time will come in your life when all that you had in the world may be the residue, the, 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 the remainder of all the curse, of all the yoke, of all the reproach of Egypt, of the world still in your life. I believe the time will come and the time has come when they will be rolled away in Jesus' name. Then number four, the celebration of the Passover. They passed, uh, the Lord passed over them and they left Egypt and they came to the land of, uh, they came to the wilderness. Now they were in the land of Canaan. Now they were to remember. We are no more to go back into the old Egypt life anymore. They celebrated the Passover. Number five, the commencement of eating the fruit of the promised land. Now they had just entered. They had not even conquered Jericho yet. And then it says that the edge of the fruit of the land. Number six, the uh, cessation. Well, I put number six for number five, don't mind. And the cessation of manna. That is, manna ceased. The food of the wilderness for 40 years came to an end. And then number seven, Joshua met the conquering captain from heaven that arrived to lead the people of God unto victory. And I believe today, as we study this, and we ourselves will get into the life of obedience. The Lord is going to lead us into victory from this very day in Jesus' name. As we study the chapter itself, we want to participate with obedient Israel in faith and faithfulness so that we too we can begin to eat of the land of the land of promise for us there are three points we're looking at number one renewed covenant through the circum through circumcision and purity renewed covenant through circumcision and purity number two redeemed israel celebrating the passover number three reassurance of the captain of divine power Number one, renewed covenant through circumcision and purity. I read now from verse two. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make the sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the four skins. And this is the cause. This is the reason why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt, that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way, after they, after they came out of Egypt. Now, all the people that came out of, that came, were circumcised. That is, the elderly people, the adult people, that had come out of the land of Egypt, they were circumcised, because that was the covenant of the Lord or the people of Israel. But then it says in that verse 5, and all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them, they had not circumcised. You know what that means? All those that were born in the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and they now they amounted to thousands and millions. They had not been circumcised. Many of them will be about 39, 38, 35, 10, 20, whatever. But they were now adults. And among many of them were men of war. They had not been circumcised for the children of Israel in verse 6. Walked 40 years in the wilderness. Till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed. Because they obeyed not uh, the voice of the Lord at Kadesh Barnea. When they should have moved on. The ten spies came back and told them they will not be able to. And because of that, they all rebelled. They obeyed not the voice of the Lord. And they did not move into the land uh, immediately. Then it says unto them, the Lord swear that he would not show them the land. Which the Lord swear unto their fathers uh, that he would give us a land that flowed with milk and honey. And the children whom he raised up in their place in their stead. Then Joshua circumcised at this time, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising of all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp, 
till they were whole. That is, till they were healed. You understand? When those males were circumcised, it will make them sore. It will make them have sore in their private parts. And they will not be able to walk. They will not be able to do anything. They have to just lie down until they'll be made whole. But then the Lord said in verse 9, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day of circumcision, this day, of uh, reaffirming reconfirming the covenant again i had with my friend abraham this day when the uh, first king of your flesh is taken away have i also rolled away the reproach of egypt from all of you wherefore and the name of the place is called gilgal until this day that's the beginning of this chapter and i want you to understand that uh, those things we have just read that may look very simple they have some deep deep places for us number one the ways of god are not the ways of men because humanly speaking this wasn't the best time this wasn't the right time to circumcise the men of war you understand that they were now before jericho and all the men of jericho the valiant men of jericho they were looking at them and they didn't know what could happen to them if they circumcised all the men of war and all these men of war became weak they couldn't carry the sword they couldn't do anything and they were incapacitated and weakened to move on in the war in fact no man would have advised or counseled joshua to carry out a general circumcision of the children of israel at this time because they knew that uh, this is what happened to the shechemites in uh, genesis chapter 34 uh, they had defiled dinah one of the, the, the daughters of jacob and then uh, Simon and Levi deceived them and said, We cannot give a daughter or sister to you, except you be circumcised. And those people, they got to the gate of their city, they said, Let's listen to these people. If we can be circumcised as they are circumcised, then we'll have the same property together, live in the land together, we'll be able to intermarry together. And then they were all circumcised, and while in that circumcision, and they were weak. Then Simon and Levi went there, only two men, and killed the whole of them. And therefore you understand how dangerous it was for them to be circumcised at this time. It must have been a great test for Joshua's faith. Because it, made, it meant that all the males, all the men of war, were so weakened they will not be able to fight. In fact, for the children of Israel themselves to submit to such circumcision at a time like this was an evidence of their faith an evidence of their obedience to the lord and they knew that if they will just obey the lord the promise of protection will be there for them it teaches us a lesson we must not neglect to obey the lord we must not hesitate we must not delay our obedience because of the fear of the consequences what if I obey and then I become so weakened and then the enemies, they just march on me and then they, they get me out of the way? What if I do this now and then the job of uh, conquering the uh, people in Jericho we are not able to do? It will be a foolish step we would have taken. But you know, if we are really going to obey the Lord, there will be no delay. There will be no tardiness. There will be no hesitation. Uh, whether it's to make restitution or it is to leave a sinful business, or it is to separate ourselves from a right-hand man or a bosom friend woman that is continually causing us to sin, we obey the Lord without waiting for a time when it will be expedient for us, when we'll say, if I obey now, there will be no consequence at all. Everything will be all right. It's too late then. Obey the Lord, even though it might appear that there is something you might uh, that might be at stake. Before I leave this section one, let me emphasize to you that although this circumcision was very important for the children of Israel, even for those children of Israel, the Lord told them it was just a symbol. And the symbol was to represent another kind of circumcision, a deeper circumcision, a higher circumcision, a kind of circumcision that will affect their heart, affect their mind, affect their affection unto the Lord. Let's look at the Bible for you to understand that even for the children of Israel, the outward external circumcision alone was not enough. In Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26. Jeremiah 29, verse 26. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Amnon and Moab and all that are the, and all that are the uttermost, uh, utmost uh, corners that dwell in the wilderness. Listen to this now. For all these nations are uncircumcised. 
they uncircumcised in the flesh. Look at then what follows what the prophet was telling the people of God. And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. It says, uh, you children of Israel, you might think that you have fulfilled everything. You have done the greatest thing that could be done. Because you are circumcised in flesh. How about your heart? He was telling them in Jer Jeremiah chapter 6 and in verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 6. In verse 10, it says there, To whom shall I speak or give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. There are two things that were blunt in Jeremiah now. Jeremiah said, number one, although you are circumcised in the flesh, your heart is not circumcised. He said, number two, your ears are not circumcised. See the way that Stephen brought those two things together. He's still talking to the children of Israel in Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, reading from verse 51. It says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers, as your fathers did, so do ye. So you understand that even for the children of Israel, the outward, external, fleshless circumcision was just a pointer to a greater, deeper, higher circumcision, the spiritual one they ought to have. And in fact, Moses did not leave them in darkness as to the circumcision God required. He told them, on the one hand, circumcise your heart. On the other hand, present yourself before the Lord so that he can circumcise you in the heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Reading in verse 16. Circumcise therefore the first skin of your heart. That's what Moses told them. He said that outward thing is not enough. It's just a pointer. It's just a beginning. Let it go deeper and higher. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Reading there in verse 6. The Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. We understand then the spiritual circumcision that is a cleansing of the heart. Our affection being divorced from evil, being united to that which is good. Circumcision of the heart, which leads us into implicit obedience, total obedience, complete obedience, and the perfect obedience to the commandments of the Lord. That's what the Lord is looking for. It makes us to come before the Lord and reject our own will, and then cast away the stony heart, and let him remove or pray within us, take away that stony heart, self-will is gone. And then when that takes place, he implants within us the heart of flesh. And it is when that circumcision takes place, the Lord himself says, I've sanctified you now, I've purified you now, i put you in the inner man now. And you know what has happened? I remove, I roll away from you the very reproach of Egypt. That leads us to point number two. Redeemed Israel, celebrating the Passover. And we thank God for these uh, children of Israel. You know why? Because anybody could have thought River Jordan is now divided. And as River Jordan is divided, what do you think we should do? March on and capture Jericho. But no, obedience to the word of the Lord. In fact, I think the uh, people in Jericho, they must have been looking at these people as peculiar people, strange people, people to be wondered at. Actually, in a later generation, that's exactly what was said about another Joshua and his people and what was said about that other joshua is what could have been said about this joshua we're learning about in in a zechariah chapter 3. zechariah chapter 3. Uh, we will look at what what was said about a uh, later joshua joshua at a later date zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 here now o joshua the high priest thou and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wandered at they are men wandered at turn your mind back to joshua of the old testament the one we are studying and uh, they are come over uh, to over the river jordan miraculously and the lord had glorified himself and you would have thought the very next thing to do is to command all the men of war march on and capture jericho but this man a man to be wondered at he counted obedience greater than possession 
he counted preparation better and greater and higher than moving in to participate in the victory he said what the lord wants us to do he wants us to be circumcised and then they sat down weakened and incapacitated themselves and they were circumcised and when they did that and then they were getting whole now you would have thought you would have said now to taste the victory if you know men of war if you know soldiers it's like they are thirsty to conquer they are thirsty to just move in and they overcome and it must have been like that for joshua but his ears and his mind they were glued to the word of god what word of god was he operating on at this time in exodus chapter 12 exodus chapter 12 reading from verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast against all the gods of egypt will i execute judgment i am the lord and the blood shall be unto you for a token for a sign and upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you let me still remind you today the angel of death will pass over you the angel of sickness will pass over you calamities and sicknesses will pass over you when i see the blood your faith may be weak you may think that you are not as strong as you ought to be all those children of israel they stayed within those houses when the marks of the blood of the lamp was there and the lord said when i see the blood i will pass over you the things that are happening in egypt will not happen unto you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt and then in verse 14 and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep it a feast to the lord throughout your generations and ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever now something is important as we look at the life of uh, joshua and uh, you look at now verses 23 verses 24 rather uh, to 27 and ye shall observe this thing that's a passover for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever and it shall come to pass when ye become to the land you see this it shall come to pass when ye become to the land which the lord shall give you according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service and then in verse 27 and you shall say it is the sacrifice of the lord's passover you know what moses had said he said uh, children of israel you will get to that land but the moment you get into that land it shall come to pass you will keep this service it is a service of the passover and immediately they cross river jordan when you think they should march on and get Jericho, and Joshua said, No, I remember the word of God. We cannot keep to the word of God and be disappointed. The greatest way to have the victory is that as you move into the land of promise, as your feet step into that place in gratitude to the Lord, you will do what the Lord had said. And so they celebrated the Passover. It's a kind of a challenge to us that we will not wait for a better time. And you know, they, they, they are, there are always people people that are waiting for a convenient time always people that are saying i know what i ought to do i know i ought to respond uh, to the message that i'm hearing but i think i need to wait for a convenient time in acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 24 verse 25 and as a reason of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come felix trembled and answered uh, see the answer now go thy way for this time when i have a convenient season i will call for thee it says i understand what you're saying i feel it i'm convicted about it i know i must do something about it but it's not convenient now when i have convenient season i will call for you is uh, you know something very important for the church you remember that uh, jesus christ in matthew chapter 26 he celebrated the passover for the last time and as he celebrated the passover for the last time he changed it now and then he made illustration about his body because uh, the passover for generation to generation it was uh, the lamb that they will kill but now the lamp of god has come the reality has come and therefore the shadow will pass away he then said this is my body that is broken for you do this in remembrance of me after that he took the cup and he said this is the cup of the new testament which you drink and it is a symbol of his blood as often as you do it you do it to remember the lord's death until he comes are we like joshua in our church 
or do we wait for a convenient season and we say it's not convenient now we don't have all the buildings we need to have we don't have all the conveniences when it's very very convenient and we have done this and we have done this and we have done that and we have got this and we have got that then we will celebrate our own lord's supper which replaces the passover we shouldn't do that we shouldn't wait for a convenient season and then we come to joshua chapter 5 in joshua chapter 5 it says uh, let's look at verse 10 and the children of israel encamped in gilgal and kept the passover on the 14th day of the of the month even at evening in the plains of jericho and then in verse 11 and they did eat of the old corn of the lunch on the morrow after the passover on leaving cakes and parched corn and the self same day and the man ceased that means he stopped it didn't come again on the morrow after day at eating of the old corn eh, of the land neither had the children of israel manna anymore but they did eat of the fruit of the land of canaan that year for how many years are they eating manna i said for how many years did they eat manna and you know some people they're already used to the manna and if it stops they get so disappointed and see see what has happened there is no manner i cannot eat any other thing when there is a change then you accommodate that change and you see here in uh, uh, nehemiah chapter 9 nehemiah chapter 9 verses 20 and 21 thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheld us not thy manner from their mouth and gave them water and um, uh, gave the gave us them water for their thirst yea 40 years did they did uh, thou sustain them in the wilderness so that that they lacked nothing their clothes wax not old and their feet swelled not here we learn uh, something now you see it says they came uh, to the land of canaan and when they came to the land of canaan there was natural corn there and uh, the people had planted the corn and this is what the lord had told them already through uh, moses he said when you get to that land you're going to possess houses you didn't build vineyards you didn't plant and the fruits you didn't uh, labor for is uh, just going to be available for you right there in Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, verses 10 and 11 it shall come to it shall be when the lord thy god shall have brought thee into the land which is swear unto thy fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not houses full of good things which thou fillest not wells uh, and no well and wells dig which thou diggest not vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not when thou shalt have eaten and be full immediately joshua go to the land they saw the lord had already provided for them bands full of the fruit of the land the fruit of the promised land i told you last week all these people coming from the wilderness they were very eager to get to the land of promise and i'm sure you are eager to get to the land too your own land of promise where the milk and the honey flow you don't want to stay in the wilderness that is very dry you want the christian life your christian life to be flowing and to be fresh in the lord and as soon as they got there then the edge of the corn before i leave that point there is a lesson we need to learn you think of the manner that was supernatural you think of the corn that was natural you know there are people they want to live their lives always in the uh, supernatural if god has brought water out of the rock that's the kind of water they want to drink every time i want to drink miracle water i don't want the normal water that comes out of the river because you know i'm a child of miracle i'm holy ghost believer miracle believer and if god provides anything natural they say no that's not for me all i want every time so, miraculous supernatural extraordinary but you understand god works in various ways in fact as believers there'll be a balance of supernatural and natural in our lives and god doesn't work on necessary miracles there are some miracles that are necessary you know in the natural remedies there the natural thing to have is there and if the lord knows that that ordinary thing natural thing is i said take it it's for you already and the problem will be solved say so, no i'm i'm born again i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost although that is a solution that's ordinary solution that is a natural solution i want extraordinary i want exploits i want supernatural turn to acts of the apostles chapter 12 in acts of the apostles chapter 12 reading there from verse uh, 5 it says uh, peter 
therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him and when herod would have brought him forth the same night peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison and behold the angel of the lord came uh, the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise so quickly and his chains fell off uh, from his hands that was a miracle and the angel said god thyself that did it happen by miracle god thyself you can do that that's ordinary that's natural you do that what you can do you do what you cannot do almighty god will do with a miracle bind on thy sandals that you can do go ahead and do it and so he did and uh, he said unto him cast thy garments about thee i won't do that for you i came from heaven i could dress you you are not all dress yourself and follow me and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which had been done by the angel but thought he saw a vision and when they were listening to this when they were past the first and the second word they came unto the iron gate which leadeth into the city you know it was a prison and because of security they were locked that uh, gate and it was an iron gate which opened to them of the son accord that needed a miracle a miracle was performed and that's the point we're making when the supernatural is needed when a miracle is needed god performs a miracle and they went out and passed on through one street and they forced with the angel departed from him and peter was come to himself and he said now i know that of a surety that the lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of a herod and from the expectation of the people of the jews and when he had considered the scene he came to the house he considered you know you needed to use his because you know he had been delivered miraculously but was on the street he was free but he was not saved it was not safe for him as he had been delivered to stay on the street there and god was not going to perform a miracle to make him get out of the street a natural sinner to be done now and then it says he considered he came to the house of uh, the mother of john whose surname was mark where many were gathered together praying and as peter not uh, i saw the iron gate open miraculously why didn't this door open miraculously the supernatural and the natural they combine in our lives when it is necessary to perform a miracle god will do it when it is not necessary you have to knock at the door then you have to do it in knock at the door of the gate and a damsel came to her king named rhoda and when she was uh, when she knew peter's voice as uh, she opened not the gate for gladness and ran in and told uh, how peter stood at the gate and then in verse 16 but peter continued knocking the angel didn't come back to open that gate to open that door it was necessary for peter to do it naturally and when they had opened the door and saw him they were astonished we were back in joshua the point is there are times when it will be necessary to knock at the door there are times when it will be necessary to apply something natural because that is available let's be very reasonable and be balanced in our understanding of scripture we're now in point number three reassurance of the captain with divine power in verse 13 it says and it came to pass joshua chapter 5 when joshua was by jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand and joshua went unto him and said unto him a thou for us of our enemies uh, to start with here you find courage because you know when you have been in the path of obedience there is nothing to be afraid of he saw this man and he didn't know who he represented and he saw him with a sword drawn number one he didn't run away number two he didn't draw out his own sword and begin to fight you know sometimes there are times you'll fight your friend because you think he's an enemy because here is jericho and here is somebody that is having a sword drawn and you are a warrior already and without asking any question you think it's time to start the battle we have done the circumcision we have carried out the passover and here is the beginning of the battle now and if you are not careful you begin to fight the one that is on your side that is to help you but he didn't do that he said are you for us or for adversaries for enemies he said nay as the captain of the host of the lord am i now come who is this the captain of the host of the lord well 
is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You say, why do we say that? Look at it. And Joshua fell on his face on the, to the earth and did worship. He worshipped. If you remember in Revelation, when John the Beloved, when he worshipped the angel that had showed him all those revelations, the angels rebuked him and said, don't you do that. If this a man that appeared unto Joshua was just an angel, he would have rebuked the Joshua for worshipping him. But when he worshipped him, he said unto him, what says my Lord to his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy feet. And lose thy shoe from all thy foot. That's exactly what Jehovah told uh, Moses at the burning bush. That tells us then this contain of the host of the Lord is Christ Himself. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And Joshua did so. Marvelous thing. You know, uh, it tells us that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And then my father will love you, and I will come and I will manifest myself unto you. In uh, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, reading from verse 21, He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Follow the story. Joshua had done everything according to the word of the Lord. In obedience to the word of the Lord, he had carried out the circumcision. In obedience to the word of the Lord, he had carried uh, he cried out the celebration of the Passover. And the Lord said later, you love me, you keep my commandments, my father will love you, and I will come and manifest myself unto you. And so Christ now manifested himself unto this uh, Joshua. I believe the same thing will happen in our lives in Jesus' name. It's an encouragement for us. When the Lord comes to appear like that, he comes to encourage, he comes to strengthen, and he comes to fortify us and assure us of the victory. Well, I need to tell you that exactly what happened to Joshua is happening to every one of us. You may not see the captain of the Lord's souls, although you do not see him, he's right there by your side. He will help you. He will take you over. And you will conquer the Jerichos before you in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, reading there from verses 16 and 17. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Is that right? And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. That's a confidence you ought to have. The Lord is on your side. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Although your enemies might say they are strong, Jericho might be locked in uh, with all those men of war you are going to overcome in Jesus' name. In 2 Chronicles chapter 32, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 8, within is the arm of flesh. All they had in Jericho, just the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. He has come to fight your battle. You will not lose in this battle in Jesus' name. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 is not talking to the children of God those who are born again and it's telling you that as the mountains surround Jerusalem even though the angel of the Lord encompasses around the people that fear him the people that love him 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 ye of God little children and you have overcome them I said you have overcome them because greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world who is in the world satan is there demons are there familiar spirits are there witches and wizards are there powers of darkness are there but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world and you will overcome i said you will overcome or we'll rise up and get into a victory because already the captain of the host of the Lord is appearing unto us and he's saying, he's leading us into victory. You will not fail, you cannot fail. The Lord is on your side. He lives within you. He's the captain of the host of the Lord. He has been given to us as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the captain of our salvation. What shall we say to these things then? If God be for us, who can be against us? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Talk to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord himself, the Lord himself, he will see you through. The Lord himself, he will see you through. The Lord himself, he will see you through. You are more than a conqueror. You cannot fail. 
Because Christ cannot fail. You cannot be overcome. Because the captain of the Lord's souls cannot be overcome. He is on your side to fight your battle for you. And he has come, he means business. He comes with a sword drawn against your enemy, against your adversaries. But make sure if you need to be circumcised, your heart will be circumcised. Your heart will be circumcised. And if we are keeping the Lord's Supper, you get yourself ready, get yourself equipped, and get yourself qualified, and partake of the Lord's Supper with us. None of the children of Israel ran away or stayed in the camp or stayed somewhere. Ran away during the Passover. If you are a child of God, get everything settled. If we have to observe the Lord's Supper, get involved. And then you will find because you have been circumcised and because you keep that Lord's Supper, the Lord will glorify himself. He will fight your battles for you. You may not see the captain of the Lord's Supper, but he's there. He is there. He is there. He's watching over you. He will lead you to victory. And when we get to conquering Jericho by God's grace, all your Jericho walls will fall down.